On this episode of Impactful Teachers, we will talk about one of my most traumatic experiences with Mr. Jim Tucker. I met Jim Tucker at Northern Illinois University in 2001. He was directing a course called Opera Workshop, and I auditioned for it. I sang a song from The Chieftain by Arthur Sullivan for my audition, and it was just okay. The list was posted, and out of all the auditionees, 16 people were chosen, and I was in slot number 16. Later, this would occur to me that that was more of a criticism than just, I happened to be number 16. When we got together for the first actual class, it was comprised entirely of people who were doing that course for the first time. There were some students who were returning for opera workshop and therefore exempt from that lesson. But it was required that first timers uh, uh, participate in this course, uh, this lesson. He gathered all of us around and he asked if any of us had seen the film Titanic. And that had been out for only a few years and a number of hands went up. And he wanted us to think about the character Rose, and through the course of the story, what is it that she wants? Of course, me being a dumb faggot, I had to say, be happy, and I instantly regretted that, and not, not only because it was cringy, but because he also said, eh, be is not a verb, and that would be the one thing that I learned from him, and I just said be again is a verb. <laughs> That's the one thing I could learn from him. I amended my answer by answering that Rose wants to break free of the social restraints that are placed upon her to live the way she wants to and to to be with, the, with a man that she loves instead of marrying someone she does not. And again, B. And all right, there was some learning to be done there on my part. And after this lesson, I don't remember what else, oh, he did say, he did say the point of this exercise was to get us thinking about what it is we are singing about, what our characters want. And we were going to go through every song we were assigned, line by line, and analyze what is it I want in this sentence. That was a good thing. That actually made some level of sense, and at the outset of this course, I anticipated learning something beyond my sphere of Gilbert and Sullivan opera, and related content. And uh, also uh, learning more about just the style and how to approach it and how to think about it intelligently. I should have been so lucky. After this lesson, we met with him individually for a few minutes, and privately too. Now I wanted him to be my ally in this, so um, I really tried to approach things positively and in a spirit of cooperation. At the time, I was hugely invested in producing light opera. It was something I wanted to do. I think I wanted to do Princess Toto at the time, and I showed him the score. He was not interested. And when I told him I have an interest in Gilbert and Sullivan opera, he took me flat aback by saying, I think Gilbert and Sullivan Opera is for people of the lowest musical intelligence. Just, whoa. The man is entitled to an opinion, but that was certainly... <clears throat> that set the tone for our educational relationship. Because he would come to view me as such. And maybe I was at the time. We were planning a program f on the theme of home for our first for our first autumn concert, and it was arranged entirely from 20th century musicals. So we had uh, I think 110 in the Shade. There was some Sound of Music. There was Oklahoma. There were a few other things I did not know and do not remember. Oh, there was a song from the th the Three Penny Opera, um, and. Um, one of the girls sang, going home, going home, that song. 
and we opened our program with the Corel Home Sweet Home. I will come back to this later if I remember. I was assigned Edelweiss from The Sound of Music. I would later find out that this assignment was a choice given to people who don't have a lot of musical ability, and it's not very demanding or musically interesting. So there was, it was, there was some duality to the assignment of that. And that was the only song I was given other than participating in choruses. There are 15 other people in the program, so I recognized that, you know, I can't be the star, and I did not intend to be. I did not want to. <laughs> There's B again. <laughs> uh, damn you, Jim. Unfortunately, it was 2001. And on Thursday, September 13th, I was not doing a very good job with my music. I had no voice teacher at the time, and my skill was not quite as much as I thought it was, and it showed. Plus, I was just not in a good place, and we were all shaken that week. I mean, who wasn't? And before I knew what happened, Jim Tucker absolutely exploded at me in class. Out of, quite, out, quite out of nowhere, because I wasn't answering a question fast enough. And he blamed me for everything imaginable, including, including September 11th. He actually blamed me for that. And said some really disrespectful, hurtful things. Told me I have no talent, no discipline, no decency. And a number of things that made me want to whip off my shoe and hurl it at him. Now, I need to explain a bit about Jim Tucker before proceeding. <clears throat> he was a short, pasty-faced uh, older gentleman who was obviously gay and had a huge chip on his shoulder. It's the sort of, the sort of gay that... I'm gay myself. And I was at the time, but I wasn't out about it. He was so aggressively gay that it, it, it made a person angry. And it made you want to commit a hate crime. All that time that I had with him in opera workshop and in other experiences, which were thankfully few, I never heard one note out of him. Not one singing note, or any experiences or stories about his own opera career, or productions he was in, and things he worked on, or anything that might indicate him as a, an opera singer of any caliber. He was more of a, I want to say lecture, but he was more of a bitch about it. He was a hateful bitch, and it got old really fast. And it was almost apparent from the get-go, the remark about Gilbert and Sullivan, and other little things that I do not remember that made me think, um, maybe I should watch myself around this guy. Anyway, back to September 13th. After that, uh, Jim Tucker had reduced me to a crying, quivering mess because I was so furious. I was so hurt. And... I tried to tune out the tempest of verbal abuse that he was giving me at that time over something so small. And I actually considered leaving the university. But we were only, we weren't even a month into the semester and I was not about to throw in the towel. So I stuck to it and I went back to him. I groveled, I apologized. And he said he did that because he wanted to assert that he was in control of the class. No one ever challenged him on that point. I don't think that was ever in question. And what I did certainly didn't justify the screaming. It didn't, it didn't justify the accusations. It didn't... And, and he actually tried to backpedal by saying that he did not say decency. 
in his in his list. You know, where I have no talent, no discipline, no decency. He actually tried to backpedal and say that he did not say decency. Yes, you did, because I don't make that kind of stuff up. I know what I heard, and I'm so traumatized by this years later, because because he said that. I don't make that stuff up. I tried to do better in the course, but he did not trust me to perform anything. And he didn't expect me to have any kind of dignity either. Before our performance, I think the day before, we were in the recital hall at the university, and he actually asked me in front of everybody, Scott, what are you going to wear to, to not, tomorrow night's performance? Of, of course, it's outlined in the syllabus, and it's just common sense. I'll wear my, my suit. I inquired later, privately, why did you ask me that? And his uh, response was, I just don't want you showing up looking like trash. Who the hell do you think you are? Just wow. I was so offended that I just left his office without a word. Another time, I had called him, I called him from my dormitory room, I called his office and left him a message. I asked if I was supposed to be a rehearsal that day because it wasn't clear, it wasn't written down in my book. And we did not meet every Tuesday and Thursday. The course did, certainly, but not everybody was required at every rehearsal. And I didn't write it down in my book, and for some reason I had it in my head that I was supposed to be there. I called and I inquired, and in the meantime, between that call and when he called me back, I had a spat with my neighbor. I lived in a dormitory with some super um, redneck boys who were very anti-gay, and they, they, they were homo bashers. And I knew I wasn't out, but they knew. They knew I was gay. They could just sense it. I didn't have to tell them. And I wasn't out and proud about it. It was just, okay, it's just who I was. And I had a spat with them. We had a fight. I came back in, and unfortunately, Jim called me. I answered the phone in a not-too-pleasant way, seeing only the, the phone number on there, which was similar to the, to the, the, neighbor, the neighbor's phone, person I've been arguing with, and I just picked it up and I answered the phone in a not too pleasant way. Jim had a, nat a naturally aggressive response to that because he has no idea what's going on, but instead of finding out what's going on, he just went straight to aggression. Yes, you are required at rehearsal, and I suggest you get your attitude together before you come to rehearsal, and he promptly hung up. At that point, I wasn't going to have it. After the accusations and the whole thing where he tried to backpedal and lie about what he actually said, plus other abusive things, I called him back, told him he better get his shit together before I come to rehearsal because we deserve a teacher who isn't a hateful bastard. And I hung up the phone on him, and I slammed the phone down so many times that I almost broke it. I was, I was furious. And I went to rehearsal. We didn't say one word to each other, not even for directions. There was no greeting when I came into class. There were no directions given to me. He didn't even acknowledge me. I may as well have not been there. <clears throat> the second program we did was... What was it? It was the Mozart de Pont operas and selections from those. Uh, we did some Marriage of Figaro. We did some Don Giovanni. We had... Cosi Venturi, I think. Don't really remember. I don't remember the third one. It might have been Cosi. I don't remember. And I was assigned, again, only one song. And this time it was De Vieni a la Finestra from Don Giovanni. Actually, this is the second thing I learned from him. The proper way to pronounce Giovanni. The Western way in America it tends to be Giovanni, and it's not. In proper Italian, it's Giovanni. Trisyllabic, not quadrisyllabic. Side point, I did learn that from him. He assigned me this song and ex told me that he expected more out of me this time. 
and I said ditto. Just right off. He got right in my face and said, don't you ever fucking talk to me like that again, you little pissant. You are the worst singer in this class. And if you do it again, I will go to the powers that be and have you removed from this school. Do you understand? Or something of that nature. I think that's a paraphrase because it was so many years ago. But that's how I remember it. He also added, he also added that I contributed nothing to the ensemble. That, I felt, was completely inappropriate. In the first place, you don't swear at a student. And two, you certainly don't give them that kind of analysis, because if you do, I have to wonder who the hell did he pass on for Opera Workshop that he accepted me? If I was as bad as he was saying, who did he pass on? Who else auditioned that was worse than me? Wow. He did say at the end of the course, and I'm getting ahead of things, uh, he did say at the end of the course that he cast me only because it looked like I knew what I was singing about. Okay. Jim Tucker did not assign me any business for either the Edelweiss song, which made no impact and was dull as hell, and he did not assign me anything for Devyeni. I had to come up with this on my own. And it was suggested to me by his assistant, P Peter something. I don't know, he, he had a, 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 a teacher's assistant. Um, it was suggested to me by the teacher's assistant that I go to one of my other classmates, uh, Mike something, who had sung that song previously on a recital, and get some advice from him on how to perform it. So this TA had my best interest at heart. And I did that. Mike gave me a crash course in it, answered a few questions, and sent me on my way. I did my assignment on uh, what it is characters want <coughs> with this song. And I turned that in. And then I sang my song. Mr. Tucker was actually impressed because I, one, did the assignment effectively and did the essay portion effectively and correctly, he gave me an A on it. And the singing, although it did need some fine tuning because I had no voice teacher at the time and I had fired my teacher, Bob Sims. And there's a video about him here in this Impactful Teachers series as well. If you want to look at that. I, it was, it was actually progress. But it didn't last. It didn't last. I had a private rehearsal with him and the accompanist and the TA. And their common complaint was that they could not hear me over the piano. Now, my gap in education between my peers and myself was very evident. They all had voice lessons and I did not. And it showed. So. I was naturally intimidated and anxious and I could not project because I was afraid to get any sound out lest it be wrong. I could sing, but uh, when you have an iron, finger, an iron fingered accompanist, sometimes that's a lot more work than you're expecting to do. So there was one time when I did shout singing. There was another time I did an over-voiced, operatic voice. Like that. It was over, it was really exaggerated. And Jim was pretty mad. He said, if you ever sing like that again, don't you ever sing like that again. I think it was the second one. He, threat he said, don't you ever sing like that again. Like, do you want the sound out or not? Uh, but the TA and I had to come up with the business for Devyeni, so I actually was doing something instead of just standing there and giving a very static, boring to look at performance. And I had the song all to myself with uh, some pantomime from one of the girls. And uh, it was very stressful, but it worked out okay. I had to learn the Italian myself. 
I had to learn the phrasing myself, the notes I had, the rhythms I had, and the acting part I had. But overall, Opera Workshop with Jim Tucker was not fun. This guy was a total bastard. And those are just a few, the few examples I've given you were, are just a few examples. The one that really got me the most, the one that really hurt me the most, and the one that had the biggest impact, was toward the end of the semester. We hadn't yet performed uh, the, uh, the Mozart program. But it was announced what our opera in the spring semester would be. We were going to do four saints in three acts. And considering how bad this first semester had been, I did not want to participate in the second semester. So before that choice was taken from me, I went to him, met him in the hallway, and I said, I thought, I'd like, I thought you'd like to know that I won't be participating in the spring opera. And I meant that as a gesture of goodwill. So if he had a part in mind for me, he could find a better singer for it. It seemed like a professional and courteous thing to do, and it was something I had not been... <laughs> it was a courtesy not extended to me during my own productions at that time. And his response was a hateful and clippy, Well, that's fine, I wouldn't have allowed you to be it anyway. Okay, that was also the wrong response. The correct response would have been, okay, thanks for telling me. Instead, he chose to be nasty about it. Like, you, it's not about whether or not you'd allow me to be in it. I remember telling him this too. It's not about whether you allow me to be in it. You don't get a say because I've already decided not to participate. The mat your feelings in the matter are irrelevant. Fuck you. And... I certainly said it in a more aggressive voice and, uh, and louder, and I wanted people to hear. I made a scene. And his re reaction was, this is why I won't allow you to be in my class. And I'm like, bitch, you don't have any class. And that's why I don't want to participate. <sighs> it, it, see, it, that kind of behavior made you want to commit a hate crime. We did... The Mozart program, it went better. I think I sang it better. But if he had trusted me with any of the other songs in either program, I really could have showed him what I was capable of doing. Instead, I got mediocre songs with no direction of any kind. He didn't even show himself to be a decent stage director. It was mostly static movements and boring things and people walking around the stage or little patterns and little furniture things to be moved. He also showed no creativity in later years when he would produce operas. The staging was uninteresting to look at. There was no level of costuming. There was barely any kind of scenery. I recognize there may not have been a budget for that, but it's a school, a university. There should be some something. There should be something, but he put nothing into it. And it was visually uninteresting. And even just moving people about the stage or doing any anything to, to bring it to life wasn't there. I saw that in... I actually attended the, 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 the Three Saints opera and I just did not get into it. Could not. He later did Orpheus in the Underworld, which was better, but you could tell he rewrote the libretto. And he did the Magic Flute, which had some improvements, but still had a long ways to go as far as visual presentation. And if he was ex as experienced as he wanted us to believe, and maybe he was, but I don't recall ever seeing his credentials of anywhere in any program, or even, even posters on his office wall of the productions he was in, he, let, he did not show any, any level of theater directing ability. It was all just one flat, boring tone. We had the program, I'm getting off course, we had the program, and then the end of the semester came, and we each had private evaluations with him. Our TA was not present, 
And for some reason, the accompanist, uh, Bill Kaler, sat in on my evaluation. I think he wanted a witness. And already, my, my red flags were going up as soon as I walked into our, our rehearsal room, because two of them were there when I expected the TA and Mr. Tucker. I had, I have to explain something else. <clears throat> I wanted to study opera performance. He was the only person in the faculty who would be visibly qualified to do it. I suppose there might have been others, maybe voice teachers, but I wasn't interested in working with them, as we would later find out. But he was doing opera workshops, so it made sense. It was a, it was a logical conclusion. But in order to do private study, I had to apply, I had to submit a proposal to him for it. And I wanted to learn the worthwhile craft of theater, producing opera and management, recruitment, finances, that sort of thing. The things I would do later in my life in my, and succeed at in my 30s, about at least 10 years from there. And I submitted a two-page proposal for study, and he actually accepted. He was surprised because he didn't think I would, I would, I would give it to him. He wasn't going to accept it, however, because, get this, he actually, he actually said that I won't allow you in any of my courses, as if he taught anything else, I won't allow you in any of my courses until I see a change in your behavior. And again, I said, ditto. He elaborated by saying that I need to take an anger management course. I need to take an anger management course. I mean, that's rich. And I need to f realize that uh, I need to think about the way I come across to other people. Again, ditto, but I'm curious, how is this change to be affected? If, if there's to be a change in my behavior, how do you expect to observe it? Because I won't be interacting with you, I'm not in your course, and we don't see each other between classes because you're part of the adjunct faculty. I don't know, he set up an impossible situation there. But that didn't stop me. I kept I auditioned for him in the autumn of 2002. Uh, or maybe it was two, or maybe it was uh, maybe it was the beginning of 2003 to, when they were planning Orpheus. I don't know. I don't remember. Maybe it was both. It's not standing out. But he continued to be a hateful piece of shit. I took up a job ushering. At the, at the university, and he actually felt the need to come to me prior to the performances and make inappropriate remarks and tell me how to do my job. Another time I was, at 2004, I was doing a directing course at a different school when I was back at Rock Valley College, yeah? and I was assigned to do a, a scene. I was to, to stage a scene to recreate its look. And the scene was uh, the Sunday painting. It, it's got, I, I forget who painted it. And it's got pointillism, and there's people in Victorian dress, and there's Sunday in the park. And I remembered he had done the song Sunday, I think from a Sondheim musical, and staged that with, with very similar props and the same look, the same idea uh, in the previous recital that I attended post-university. And I, I called, I inquired if he still had the things, and if, the props, and if he might lend them to me. Not all of them, maybe just a couple, to help me make the scene to do my assignment. And he said, no, I don't have them anymore, and even if I did, I wouldn't lend them to you. Okay, inappropriate. You needed only the first part. This man did not have any limits. He had you know, I have to wonder if his accusation of no talent and no discipline and no decency was more of a projection than anything else. You know, he was projecting his insecurities onto his students. He had no right to talk to a student like that, no matter how unsatisfactory I might be. 
you don't talk to students like that. And it isn't necessary. How do you expect a positive learning environment when you behave like that? And I let him know, over the, the la this is the last time I spoke to him too, but this is the last time I spoke to him too when I asked for those props. I let him know, you don't need to talk to me like that. You could just say that uh, you don't have them anymore and leave it at that. You don't have to add more insults. And maybe you should think about the way you come across to other people. And I wanted to add more, but he hung up the phone. Jackass. I was back at the school a few years later for a fraternity thing. And I walked around the campus, or rather around the School of Music. And I did not find his office. It, the place where it used to be was occupied by somebody else, and it was not around. I don't know where he ended up. I don't know where he went to. I can't get any kind of closure or resolution. Although the day I walked away and stopped communicating with him, I guess was my closure. But I still have all this trauma on these demons. And I worked them out in my biography, and I'm working them out here in this video. This is a long video, and I do apologize for that, by the way. I try to keep these shorter. But I'd love to call him up and tell him what a hateful piece of shit he was. And how wrong he was. He kept telling me that my one-man opera company will never work. Well, it did. It did for 13 years. There were times that it sucked, but there were also a lot of really good times. And the really good times outweigh the bad ones. My one-man opera company did function. And it wasn't because of anything I learned from him. He made no impact. In fact, he made me want to quit performing altogether from just one semester of his bad teaching. It wasn't even teaching. He had nothing to teach. And did not impart any knowledge on me other than B is not a verb and how to say Don Giovanni. And you know what? I didn't need all this luggage and a $10,000 student loan debt to learn those things. I could have stayed home and being exactly the same. I hope he's dead. I really do. And if you're watching this, Jim Tucker, well, I hate you. You're a horrible person. And I hope you said the right thing to the wrong student one of those days. And he gave you exactly what you deserve. You don't talk to students like that. And maybe some of your hateful behavior was your own insecurities projecting onto them because you had no visible talent, you had no decency, you had no respect, and you certainly had no patience. And definitely no dignity for the way you spoke to people sometimes. Because I bet I wasn't the only person you did that to. But it, Chances are he's probably not watching, but if he, if he is, well, fuck you. You're worthless. You were a lousy teacher, possibly the worst teacher I ever had. And, well, that's all I want to say about that.